Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Ashley and I'm a homeschooling mom of four. And today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my quarter two homeschooling update. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare and I continue to partner with Skillshare because I love the classes that they offer on their platform. If you've never heard of Skillshare, then you have been missing out. They are an incredible online teaching platform where you can find classes on on just about anything you want from animation to hand lettering to productivity to organizing your home to taking care of your plants to cooking to just so many different classes and they are all broken down into very easy um, a couple minute segments depending on what class you take very informational not opinionated and a lot of times taught by someone who's a professional in that field or an expert so I am really excited to share with you guys the most recent class I took. It was really out of my comfort zone and I have the instructor's name right down here. I do not want to um, misspeak, but it was um, a class called Five Ways to Start Drawing as Self-Discovery by Mari Andrew. And my kids if you've been around my channel for a while you know my kids are very artistic that is not something that i taught them that is actually a skill that i do not possess or i haven't discovered or i haven't developed yet so i thought it would be kind of interesting for me to like actually take some time to see like can i actually draw can i illustrate things um and so what i the class was broken down into 10 segments ranging from a couple of minutes to about 10 minutes and i really enjoyed the grateful list um where that you were doing some illustrating and um writing with that and then there was also um something called a pie chart of resilience that i enjoyed doing um so i'm no i'm no wonderful animator yet but it was fun to kind of challenge myself outside of my comfort zone and do something that my kids would excel at just to see like how do i do it this and i enjoyed it so um Skillshare is full of wonderful things like that, that you can just learn something new, try something new, just from the comfort of your own home, and um, you know, just, just keep your mind fresh and engaged, and maybe have something to brag about or show your kids after the fact. So if you guys have never tried Skillshare, I will have a link down in the description box for you guys where you can get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. The membership cost averages out to less than $10 a month, so it's a super affordable option that can totally be used by you and your kids if you've got older kids. Um, there's a ton of painting, there's a ton of just anime drawing like there's just all kinds of things on there so i think it's a really great value and that is why i continue to partner with skillshare so thank you so much to skillshare for partnering with me on this portion of today's video but now we are going to get into my quarter two homeschooling update you guys so to just fill you in a little bit it is December when I am filming this and we have just finished quarter two of our homeschool year I've been getting a lot of questions recently about how I divide up quarters and um, different things like that I think from a lot of um, people who are new to homeschooling so to just briefly touch on that, if you're new and you're stumbling upon this video, I have a whole other video where I talk about scheduling and how I do those things. And this is going to be up to every family individually, as well as making sure you're complying with your local state laws. Um, my state doesn't have any regulation, really, and so I just do the quarters um, because I like to mentally know where we're at. So uh, a traditional public school year is 36 weeks. And so every quarter in public school is broken down into um, nine weeks. And so weeks one through nine would be quarter one, nine through 18 would be quarter two, 18 through 27 would be quarter three, 27 through 36 would be quarter four. And then we would consider that a completed school year. So that is just the way that I do it. Uh, I do not follow the public school calendar, but I do track weeks of schooling. And once we've completed nine weeks, I move us on to the next quarter. 
which is where I come and give you guys a little bit of an overview of everything, just the major points. Obviously, I can't touch on every single detail, but if you're new to homeschooling, go check out that video. That is just the way that I choose to do it. Um, and we are a year round homeschooling family. However, I do take a little bit of a longer break, usually in the summertime. So my goal every year is to kind of have six weeks off in the summer being our longest break and, um, and then take other breaks throughout the year as we need them. So it just works out well for us. So getting into quarter two, I have notes in my phone because of course I can't remember everything that I am talking about. Um, so the first thing that I want to touch on in this quarter two update is that uh, this quarter is probably like our slowest quarter of the school year. Out of quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, Quarter two generally takes us the longest amount of time to get from week nine, which is the end of quarter one, to week 20, or I'm sorry, uh, week 19, which would be the beginning of quarter three. So those nine, these nine weeks generally take us the longest amount of time, and that is because there's the holidays. It's also fall, and it's beautiful where we live during the fall. Um, we always go on a couple of trips and things like that. And so even though this year is a little bit different with everything going on in the world, we have still found ourselves falling into that natural rhythm of taking off some time. Um, and I never completely plan out our breaks at the beginning of the year for this reason and so as I'm filming this video this update right now we have just wrapped up our Thanksgiving break we took the whole week off of Thanksgiving this year that whole week um, it's not something that I always do but this year we went ahead and did that and it worked out really well so quarter two is always our quarter that takes us the longest to get through and also this year I um, I don't know if it's because I'm a um, seasoned homeschooler at this point of six years into this journey or if it's the year the end of 2020 and it's been a little bit challenging um or a lot challenging but I have just found myself like slowing down more um I don't know I just haven't had the desire to really like push super hard I've I've allowed myself and my kids to kind of we're still completing our schoolwork, don't get me wrong, but there are things that my type A rigid scheduled personality doesn't usually allow to happen. For example, um, a lot of you guys purchased the winter bundle um, through me and I cannot thank you enough for doing so. Uh, but those are new educational resources to us. This is the first year that I've ever been a part of um, kind of I wouldn't call it selling, but sharing and using um, those those educational resources from the fall and into the winter, and they are so much fun, and I love them. So you know, my former Ashley probably would have just added that on top of continuing with the science unit and continuing with our history from the good and the beautiful um, and all of the other things, but this year. I just said, no, we're gonna wait on a science unit until after the new year from the good and the beautiful. And I shared with you guys in another video that we're gonna be doing space. And I'm super excited about that. Um, but I just wanted to take the time to do all of those activities, which were definitely covering a lot of science and STEM type themes and um, just enjoy that with my kids in our morning basket time. And so, yeah, we I've just, I haven't even like thought twice about it and it's been super fun and that is not something that I ordinarily would do would be like I would just add it in and I would just make myself and my kids like a little bit like let's we're it's gonna be a little longer you know and that would have been fine too but this year I just didn't want to do that and so I've just felt like we really really slowed like down and just enjoyed um, homeschooling even more than we ever have really in the past because I've let go of like doing everything every day um, and for some of you who your personality lends itself to the opposite end of the spectrum where it's very hard for you to like complete things and get those school days done 
I fall on the other end of that where it's very hard for me to slow down, which I've shared, and um, it can really, really lend itself to being like overworked, overrun, uh, burned out, and so anyways, we've just slowed down a lot and it's been really enjoyable. So we've been doing a lot of, um, a lot of using of every day actually from our winter bundle through quarter two and we're going to be continuing on with that into quarter three because obviously there's a lot of Christmas activities and things like that um and also I am doing the Nordic box from the good and the beautiful and so that is replacing our normal read aloud just for the Christmas season so once we get to January and Christmas is over we will then be done with our winter bundle um we will then be done with the nordic box from the good and the beautiful and we will resume reading our planned read alouds and um our planned science units and i have been doing history but at a slower pace so that I wanted to touch on with you guys. Uh, the next thing that I have to share with you for this quarter two update um, is that for the first time ever, are you ready for some monumental Ashley Williams homeschool mom news? Here's a confession. I've never started a curriculum and not finished it, ever. I may have tried like a workbook or something that was like a small little $5 cost, but I have never, ever, ever gotten rid of an entire piece of curriculum because I, we just did not like it, um, ever in six years. Even the things that I knew, like, uh, we probably won't use this again next year. We always would finish it out because number one, I think it's wasteful. Number two, you know, sometimes it's not worth it to like disrupt the whole routine and everything. It's just better to finish it out and just say, well, that didn't serve us well and choose something new. Um, but for, for the first time ever, we, we nicked something and I have to tell you it was BJU, the distance learning, writing and grammar eight. Um, I was using that for my oldest daughter who is in eighth grade and if you're new to my channel I have tons of curriculum videos so I'm not going to go super in depth on why and what and all of those things but it was just not working out uh, for her and sometimes as a homeschooling mom you can sit back and you can see that sometimes frustration in your kids or frustration might even be the wrong word challenged your kids are being challenged that's a good thing in my opinion not all the time but you know sometimes that that teaches growth and perseverance and discipline and hard work and all those things but then there's times where it's not even about that it's just they're just they don't like it and it, they're not learning well and it's not connecting and it's just not well and it's it's affecting their self-confidence in that area and so we decided I decided and Kylie was very happy that uh, we were not going to conti continue on with that the course is a two-part course so the first part of the year is spent on the right the writing in grammar portion I think until like day 96 of the school year and then the second half of the year is um, they take you through something called excursions in literature and so you're reading a lot you're studying different pieces of literature you're writing things about that those things so you're still utilizing grammar and writing and all those things um, so we just stop that first portion and we jumped to the second portion and she's enjoying that a lot more so um i will be doing an entire update on what i really think about um bju press distance learning option um and i actually had kylie it's actually right here <laughs> Uh, write down her own thoughts. So I'll be sharing those with you guys in another video. So if you're curious on that specifically, uh, look out for that update. Um, even if you have younger kids not in the eighth grade yet, you might, and you're considering that for them for the future, you might want to watch that video because I'll be talking about it kind of as a whole and not necessarily just for her specific grade level. 
Um, the next thing that I wanted to touch on in this quarter two update is for the first time ever, so here's some more firsts. Like you wouldn't think there would be so many firsts as a homeschooling mom who's been doing this for six years, but here's another first. My two oldest kids are in the same math level. And um, my son excels in math and Kylie excels in other areas. So she um, needs a little bit of assistance sometimes. And you guys, let me tell you, one of the best things I have ever done is put them in the same math level. Um, Caleb technically, so Caleb is 12. He started kindergarten when he was five, just barely turned five, and I wouldn't recommend that. In hindsight, I would have much rather waited until he was six going into kindergarten, but listen, when you're young, you make mistakes. So um, he started kindergarten August, and he had just turned five in June, so he's very young, and I would not, it was not a good experience. It was largely part of why we ended up homeschooling. So I'm grateful now, but at the time it was really difficult for him and for me. So all that to be said, he technically could be in the sixth grade um, because he's 12, um, and but he is in the seventh grade because he started kindergarten when he was five. All that to be said, he's doing algebra one, which I didn't do algebra one until I was a freshman in high school. And so it honestly blows my mind that my son who could be in the sixth grade, like excels in algebra one, like gets 100% almost on every single lesson. It's like mind blowing to me and I take no credit for it. He's just gifted. Um, another reason why he would not do well in the public school system. So he has his struggles too, don't get me wrong, but in math, he just, he excels. And so Kylie, um, does well, but it just, she has to put in a little more effort, a little more note taking, a little more, um, you know, just overall, it's not her easiest subject. So he is able to help her almost as like a tutor and he sits there and you guys, it has helped me so much because number one, it's beneficial for him to have to re-explain the concept to her. Um, and I'm able to see just how deep his understanding is because he's able to reteach it to her. So it's very beneficial for him. It also gives him more practice. It also encourages their sibling bond of them having to work together. And it's also very humbling for my oldest child because she is a classic oldest child in our family. And her being humbled and having to take the help from her brother is very important for her development, I feel. And so it's been a really, really good thing. So if you've got kids that are close in age and maybe close in uh, level, um, them doing the same curriculum is not a bad idea. So uh, I wanted to touch on that. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to touch on was that we did finish our first unit of history from the good and the beautiful. We are currently doing uh, year three and we finished the first unit which is always um, something on ancient times so we really enjoyed this year's ancient section the most I feel because um, there was a lot of talk of like um, just a lot about like Noah a lot about Mesopotamia a lot about just things that we really found interesting um, but I will tell you that history is something we always end up finishing like mid third quarter and then we don't do history for like the last quarter of school um just because if i do it two to three times a week we just end up finishing it sooner so this year i decided i didn't want that to happen so i've only been doing history one to two times a week and so as i said we've been going a little bit slower uh, once we get through the holidays we'll be picking back up and i know we'll gain time um, but we are just into the very first few lessons of unit two in that history course um 
and so yeah we're started off with Africa and so we're I'm excited about that um, as far as field trips and things like that, we haven't really done a ton of like technical homeschool field trips just because things in our area are still restricted and when they're open, it's like, you know, it's just not my cup of tea. It's not my friend's cup of tea. And so we've been just doing a lot of like going to the park. Um, we did get to go to like a community garden that was outside that was really fun and enjoyable. Um, and like a relaxed environment um, and we have done uh, our tea times we've had our parties so we've still been doing all of that but we just haven't really been doing like actual school field trips just because of everything that's going on it's almost impossible to do those things however I do highly value traveling and that is no surprise if you've been around here for a while and so traveling is a part of our homeschooling it's a part of education it's a part of living it's a part of learning life skills and it's super valuable and so we have still been able to do some traveling so we went to park city utah we were able to go into the ski um museum there because the olympics were held there so that was very educational and really cool the kids were able to see like all of where the events were held they were able to look at some actual gold medals and silver medals they were able to learn more about skiing and just things like that so it's very educational and i would really recommend it if you guys find yourselves in park city um we are getting ready as i am filming this to hopefully because i mean things can change on the drop of a dime which has been a little bit difficult um, with flying because where we are hoping to go next um, will definitely be very educational and I think will be of lasting value. Um, but I'm not going to share that in this video yet. I may end up vlogging that trip, um, but I'm just praying that we get to go. We have our tickets for where we're going. We have our flights um, and we're just hoping that nothing changes there. Um, so drastically that it would we wouldn't be able to go um, so anyway I'll keep you guys posted because that I am counting as like a homeschool field trip even though it's just traveling so um, there's a lot to be learned though you know navigating airports just you know all the things so that um, is pretty much going to wrap up my quarter two update for you guys. I wanted to show you some of the books that we finished um, as I close out this video. And then um, you guys know I'll be doing like more in-depth reviews at the end of the year of all of the books. We have finished two out of the four of Answers for Kids books. Never used these before. Obsessed. Love. Highly recommend. Um, I know they have a teen version that I'm going to grab next. Uh, we fi finished uh, William Carey that we are always reading a missionary story. Loved this. Highly recommend this one. It was it was really, really, really awesome um, because they credit William Carey with being one of the very first missionaries. And so that was awesome. We read the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. My kids have seen this movie so many times, um, but I ordered Turkish Delights from Amazon for them to try as we finish this, and then they watched the movie, and it was really, really cool to see them enjoy the movie again after reading the book, um, so that was really fun. Um, my son finished um, this book, Dragon Wings. Um, there was one portion with a little bit of language in it, but he loved this book. And it is a Newbery Honor book, um, so just be, a be aware of that. He really liked this. Um, Olivia finished The Tale of Despero and a few others. Like I said, I didn't grab all of the books because at the end of our school year, we will do our full, like, what we read and what we rated and all that. Um, but she loved this book. Uh, Caleb, Kylie read this last year, Fever 1793. Um, Caleb read it and he enjoyed it. And it, this was a little bit outside of what he would generally read. Caleb very much enjoys like fantasy, sci-fi, um, those kinds of things. And so the fact that he chose this out to read, I was pretty impressed. Uh, so he enjoyed that. One book that we did not enjoy, my daughter Kylie um, started The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, the classic version of this, 
and she very very rarely if ever stops a book like midway through you can kind of see where she was she was like on page 40 and she was like mom i do not like this book can i not read it sure pick a different one um so she didn't enjoy that so those are some of the books that my kids read i just like to give you guys that little bit if you have any more questions for me about our quarter post them down in the comments below give me a thumbs up before you go and be sure to check out the links for skillshare down in the description box as well as pinned in the comments i hope you guys are doing well please let me know if you enjoy these homeschool quarter updates. I feel like I used to always just get on here and talk about homeschooling all of the time. And um, through the years, things have shifted and changed. And so I don't find myself doing that too much. So I just wanna make sure you guys still enjoy these sit down videos where I talk about it. So let me know with your comment and a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my next video really soon. Bye guys.